okay now as you can see we are stuck into the two-dimensional plane now things are gonna get a little bit tricky because for the next chapter I already gonna immediately show you the three-dimensional plane so <laughs> I believe let's just get this straight now vector function f now x y and z and it's equals to a function one of x y and z i function f2 of x y and z j and function f3 of x y and z j okay so now three-dimensional space but things are gonna get a little bit tricky in a while if those of you who have read the chapter you know what i mean a there's a vector function f or a vector f for each of the x y and z positions in the three-dimensional plane okay now that vector is given over here we got the i j and i j and k sorry i j and k components okay and the value the magnitude is given by the, the respective functions f1 f2 and f3 now pay slight attention okay because you might be tempted to think that since the i component is parallel to the x component okay this term can only be in x okay now for example x squared i you will be very tempted to think like this okay because since the i component is in the x plane sorry the, the i component is in the x axis it will be something like x squared i you are very tempted to think it this way however this may be the case but it's certainly not the case all the time you can have something even like this y squared times z to the power of i you see what i mean these are the positions in the space the three-dimensional space however the vector does not have to be in that direction so if i let i say x equals to one two and two okay so that will be let's just say it's just over here okay so the point over here the component vector that goes in this direction no doubt is the first one okay does not depend on x it depends on y and z just as it shows over here so i really just want to get this thing cleared up i know at this point of time things may seem to be very sketchy but i'm doing my best okay so again we say that there's a point defined by x y and z and we are to get the corresponding vector that's also a three-dimensional vector using the vector functions f1 vector vector components f1 f2 and f3 knowing that f1 f2 and f3 doesn't need to solely be based on x y and z okay so the component that goes this way it is dependent only on y and z okay now this backs the next question and see whether you can answer it before i give you the answer knowing that there's for every point in the space x y and z and obviously let's just say it's a big infinite space there's a corresponding vector okay in three dimensionals in, th in three dimensional bearing in mind that a vector has magnitude and direction my question to you is it possible to sketch this vector or this vector function over here okay let's just have a think about it is it possible to sketch this vector function over here in the space over here okay bearing in mind now it is not like this okay it was like this but now it's not like this okay it's not like that so is it possible to sketch it well the answer is no it's not possible at all this gives us what i would like to call a three dimen dimensional dimensional hyperspace in a r for plane okay now why do i say that because let's just follow me if you will okay a certain value of xyz let's just say we start over here we get the corresponding vector which is also three dimensional over here okay and then later we go we just increase one of the values by one and we let's just say we go over here okay and they are right next to each other there will be another vector over there which is like this okay let's just say 
And then we move over here, there'll be another vector like this, another, and then over here, another vector like this, over here, another vector like this. So it seems to me that this whole space is going to be crowded up because for each point, there is a vector, okay? It is not like we put in a value or we put in a parameter and it gives us a point on the curve. And then after that, we change the parameter, we will generate the points over here like that, and then we can match them all up like this, okay? Something like this would be this one over here. We change the parameter, we get the point on the space. This one is saying, you give me a point on the space, and then I'll give you the vector here like this. So, having said that, okay, it is not possible to sketch this because for each point, we are not giving the, it does not give us the value of the point in the space. It's giving us the vector. And that is difficult because the vectors, there are a lot of them and we certainly can't sketch that because they are all going in all different amounts of, all different directions. Okay, however, this doesn't mean it's useless information, I might add. It just simply means it's called a vector field. Vector field. Because for each point, there's a vector. Okay? So what this means is that a liquid, very quickly, we're talking about streamlines. Okay? Streamlines with reference to a liquid. So a liquid is going from here to here. Okay? And it's a three-dimensional liquid. Okay? Like that. It's a three-dimensional liquid. So it's saying that in the liquid, you give me the point over here, and I'll give you the direction the liquid is going to go. A vector field. A direction which is given by this vector over there. And that is just the start of vector fields. I hope you can stay on for the ride.